another day to talk about the issues concerning Nigeria. Esther, democracy is when people keep government in a check, according to Aung San Suu Kyi of Myanmar. And this is how we're going to start today. All right, I agree with you, Jose. Uh, hello and welcome to Public Conscience, the anti-corruption program produced by the Progressive Impact Organization for Community Development, Primal. I am Chidozi Obunaya, and I'm with my colleague, Esther Basin. Thanks for joining us, and please join us on our live stream on Facebook at Official Primog, if it is convenient for you. On public conscience, we seek to evolve a corruption-free society by drawing government and citizens' attention to corruption reports and issues for prompt democratic actions against them. We also promote integrity by amplifying rare cases of the display of honesty by public and private individuals. We appreciate the MacArthur Foundation for supporting the production of this program. After electing its presiding and principal officers, the 10th National Assembly is already up and running, but not without huge expectations from Nigerians. And that is why our focus on today's program is on aspects of the legislative duties of the 10th National Assembly. The National Assembly is the bastion of democracy and constitutionally saddled with several functions. Prominent among them are lawmaking, representation, oversight, and a host of other things. The legislative arm of the government, in addition to its core mandate, is expected to monitor how the funds appropriated to executive and judiciary are spent, ensure due process, transparency, and accountability. The 10th National Assembly is also expected to do self-monitoring in order to ensure their spending is open to public scrutiny. And for some Nigerians, the impact of lawmakers over the years has been far from satisfactory in the area of engendering good governance, making people-oriented laws, and deepening the fight against corruption. For example, allegations of budget pardon, contract manipulation and, and scam perpetrated by the legislators are still heard of every now and then. An investigative report published recently by WikiTimes indicted the federal government of inflating money allocated for, for road construction in Plateau State. According to the investigation, 80 million naira was earlier proposed for roads construction for road constructions in the proposed 2023 budget but the amount was outrageously inflated to 4.59 billion naira in the approved budget an investigative journalist with wiki times will join us shortly to throw more light on these reports other issues that some citizens are worried about include the independence of the assembly and the lackluster attitude of lawmakers in projecting the anti-corruption agenda. However, former Akwaibom State Governor Goswil Apabi, upon his emergence as the, as the president of the Nigerian Senate, vowed that the Red Chamber, under his watch, will support the expectations of Nigerians in building a prosperous nation. But the million dollar question, Esther, is or remains, what is the legislative agenda of the 10th National Assembly, what is going to be different from the past? As a citizen, what are your expectations of the National Assembly, especially in the aspect of oversight functions and the fight against corruption? Also, what are your concerns about the 10th National Assembly, a whole lot of issues? Of course, but be ready to join us through phone and text messages during this conversation. The phone lines or WhatsApp phone lines to send your message is 0902-265-6167. That is 0902-265-6167. Please indicate your name and your location when sending your message. This number is for messages only. Please begin to send your messages as soon as possible to 0902-265-6167. That is... 090 We will give out the numbers to call shortly. And if you just joined us, we are looking at the task before the 10th National Assembly as we set the agenda for the Nigerian legislature. And then let me reiterate that besides lawmaking, the National Assembly has broad oversight functions. 
they scrutinize the national budget bills and the conduct of the government officials and given corruption impact on national development the legislative arm of the government is naturally expected to support the war against corruption absolutely in, on this program we have joining us uh, an investigative journalist with the wiki times yakubu mohammed he did the investigation about inflated uh, prices of contract over price contract welcome to the program uh, thank you very much all right it's good to have you and how are you today uh, I think I'm fine. okay all right let's go on because um according to your report 80 million naira proposed for a federal government road road project in plateau was outrageously inflated to 4.58 billion naira give us a summary of this report yeah um you know the conflict reporter was doing a key into accountability reporting uh the story idea just came uh you, you know this organization uh budget budget uh tweeted about this uh and i was very curious to find out uh even though there are some lapses in what budget are treated i went ahead to investigate so along along during my investigation i found the budget document uh, you know, uh, in the proposed budget, which was just 80 million naira that was proposed for the project. So, in the approved budget, uh, it will surprise you that this thing was just inflated. You know, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't even imagine the percentage outrageously inflated. Uh, so, not, that's not the only red flag about this. Okay, uh, you say outrageously inflated. Sorry to butt in there. Uh, outrageously inflated from 80 million naira to what? So that the listener will be sure about what you're saying. 58 million naira. All right, go ahead. That's almost 5 million. Okay. Yeah, so that's not the only red flag this project. If you also look at it, it was. Uh, allocated to the defense ministry uh, and the contracting <laughs> agency, or let me say, the, the agency handling it is Nigerian Navy. So you start asking questions when did uh, you know, maritime <laughs> organizations start having, or let me say, combatant uh, agencies start constructing road. Where is the uh, particular location of this project? Well, the, the, the construction of the road is along. Dengi, Palmeya, Kaji, Wau, Bauchi Road in Plateau State. So it is in, the, the road is located in Kanamboka government area of Plateau State. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead. Yeah, so, um, uh, while I was doing my investigation, I, I understand that okay, this has been uh, allocated, you know, awarded to the Nigerian Navy. So I started asking questions. Is there a military base along the road? Uh, do we have a naval base? And you know, to to my surprise, nothing like that. It's just a rural road connecting to those communities I mentioned. But my investigation further revealed that the chairman um, Yusuf Gadi, who was the chairman of uh, Navy House Committee on Navy. Uh, you know, the road links to his community and along, the, along, along my finding, I, I had to, you know, contact him and I guess I was not wrong. He was telling me he doesn't think there's anything wrong when he, he, he was in the house and he could, you know, lobby for a project that leads to his community. Mm. He, 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 he oversee the uh, Committee on Navy in the Assembly, it could influence the decision for Navy to handle the road. Yakubu, um, Yakubu, just for I us to be sure, just for us to be sure, and because we don't have so much time on our own side, what is your main gross grouse about the 
project is it the inflated price or is it that the project is not located anywhere and you also uh, have to check if actually the increase increment in, in in the project cost is was actually you know factor factored into uh, uh, the whole scheme of things because they won't just inflate price without checking if that place should have costed more did you do all this check yes i i did the check even though uh, not deeply but i did i did some checks i was giving you uh truth about it and you asked whether the inflation is the only thing i know i just told you that the inflation was not is not the only red flag in this uh the the road, the road can just be can just be awarded to navy so the the whole thing is uh, along the line you were telling me uh, he argued the lawmaker argued that truly this guy projected 80 uh as a as an ongoing project which i confirmed the project has been ongoing as an ongoing project for the 2023 pro, uh, project he proposed 80 million era however when they went for defense and when they went for defense, they pleaded with the assembly if it could be reviewed upward to get some things done because if they should go by that thing, by that 80 million they have earlier proposed, may not overweigh for the community because the road may be there for so long. However, uh, is it's an investigation I will still follow up with. Okay. Uh, yes. Looking at the you know the number of money that has been awarded to the road and is an ongoing project, so there are still things to dig out. Actually, the thing I can tell you is that there are a lot of things going on on our rural on our let me say rural project. The only that I would say journalists are not paying much attention to these things. Okay. Okay, so the question is, what are the methodologies you use in gathering your facts, and um, how worried are you about the role role lawmakers are playing in the worsening corruption of Nigeria society? Well, uh, I would say I'm a I'm a human before a journalist. If this is my community, I will also share, you know, part of the uh, grumblings. So as as a human, I feel okay. This is what investigating. So you talk about methodology. Definitely, we, we I as a data journalist, we 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 rely heavily on data, and we also humanize the story by you know by you know uh, contacting people involved. Oh. Interview. I, I I did interview, and I heavily relied on data. Okay. Okay, uh, Yakubu, I guess we'll have to leave it there, but I, I'm sure you, see, since you said you'll still be following up on this story, we'll keep in touch with you to be sure that when you have an outcome or you have anything uh, done by the authorities to interrogate what has happened, we'll be sure that um, we'll get that information from you and continue the conversation for us. Our plan is to make sure that our system is devoid of corruption because... Um, however, however, uh, just like what you just said now, if, if uh, the organization is looking towards to, uh, a corruption-free society, uh, if you read the story well, in Syria, we had a heated argument when this man was saying, look, the force can construct a road providing they have engineering department. Mm. I think this is a debate uh, your your platform can take up. Can take up. You know, invite these guys. Because we have federal minister of work, we have FEMA so. and we have thousands of consulting co construction companies. So, so by the time the Navy or the Army say we are doing our work ourselves, you know, there are a lot of questions we need to be asking there because not only the Navy, if your organization has engineering department it means your organization can also construct it. All right, all right. We'll follow up on that. I will do our own part. But thank you so much for joining us. Yakubu Mohammed is an investigative journalist with the Wiki Times, uh, and and he's he's reaching us. We are reaching him from here in Abuja.
and Bauchi. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. All right, if you just joined us, this is public concerns, you know, uh, and we've been speaking to an, a journalist who, you know, he had to, yeah, he had to go on and investigate an inflation of a contract by the National Assembly. And Esther, you <laughs> you heard all that uh, Yakub yes, said, yes. although we cannot confirm such because just like they said, that he said that the Navy, the uh, Ministry of Defense, they have what it takes to investigate. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's not forget our main role that we are setting agenda for the 10th National Assembly on especially on the fight against corruption and oversight and uh, another place you want to look at this year is the place where an initial budget was made for 18 million naira and then the percentage at which it was inflated and then that got approved so what happened to the inflated um, inflated figures and now we have a new national assembly what other surprises are we expecting i believe that um, something must have gone down before that happened there must be a reason for inflation and that's what we'll find out uh, but joining us now she's a program manager at uh, legislative and gender issues at policy and legal advocacy center plaq nkiru ozodi thank you so much for joining us thank you all right um i know you've been following up on all we've been doing and um, our program today we are trying to set agenda for the 10th national assembly so many issues out there and we expect them to change the face and the way things are, are, are being done in nigeria but let's go on with the questions because the current national assembly is a little over one month old what is your initial impression and your concerns so far um thank you very much uh, for having me um well in terms of initial impressions i really don't have a lot to say on that because like you rightly mentioned they are still very very new um the leadership of the national assembly you know just came in last month they were just um, elected last month and you don't have we don't have committees that are set up yet. You know, the National Assembly, they do most of their work through their committees. committees yes. So those committees haven't been set up yet. Uh, usually special committees, which are very few, that are up and running. Um, so I think it's, it's still a bit early to do an assessment. However, um, you know, looking at news reports, I would say um, that, you know, one major issue on news item, I think that the moon has created some form of impression for National Assembly you know, in the news report on on the, the plan purchase of cars for members okay and um yeah so i i really don't think that's a good way to start um and for me it shows uh, an inability for the national assembly to manage a uh, public perception and to uh, kind of be sensitive you know this is not this right now you know the country is going to be good place economically and the situation of citizens is really poor you know there's an increase in fuel in food stuff there's inflation and um Quite frankly, this is the last thing people want to hear. So, um, for me, is, I is it about ready. perception? Sorry, Kiru. Is it about perception yes. or about se being sensitive to the times? I think it's both. It's both because um, if you are able to manage public perception, then you know that shouldn't be something that should be on the agenda right now. So there's there's the issue of public perception, and secondly, there's also the issue of you know going beyond perception. There are you, People are actually asking, is this even necessary? So whether you do it now or you do it later, why should it be necessary? That conversation is there, and those are questions, you know, that they need to really answer, and those are conversations they need to have, and they're not having these conversations. A lot of okay. unanswered questions. I think, you know, what has been your, or the reactions of individuals and organizations indicted? Okay, no, okay, Nigeria's constitution Pardon me, Nigeria's constitution is explicit about the anti corruption role of the National Assembly, right? Yeah. What are those factors that are still limit or that still limit the legislature from being above board in the fight against corruption? I think there are so many. Uh, the National Assembly they face so many challenges. So I'm I'm going to look at through you know the three these three um prisons of you know character, competence and capacity. 
um, because for me, when, you, when, you, when, when most people look at the legislature, you know, just look at the issues of character, you know, they are selfish and the rest of it. But there's also the issue of capacity. So, you know, in terms of, if you're looking at it from character, you have the problem of personal interest, ambitions and loyalties. Um, you know, legislators, they have access to political power and influence. And when you have access to political power and influence, then you are vulnerable to corruption. So whether or not you are personally, you, know, you have your personal ethics or morals, the, the, the reality is that they occupy a position that puts them, that makes them vulnerable to being corrupted. Um, and they also come in, you know, they have constitutional powers, like you rightly mentioned, the constitution gives them with powers to, to do oversight, is there section 88, you know, to investigate, uh, to conduct investigations on use of public funds. So when you have that huge responsibility, then you're really vulnerable and it means a lot of responsibility is placed on you. And, you know, I think the general sense is that they haven't really lived up to the ex- expectations. And, you know, one of, one of the challenges is that political action in among these people, and politicians generally, is that they are, they are often driven by personal interests rather than, than, than collective goods. Um, and, you know, there's a lack of transparency, um, lack of political will um, to really fight corruption for different reasons. Um, and, you know, looking um, in, in terms of the National Assembly's own capacity, you know, you need good internal self regulations within the Assembly to be able to take anti-corruption because it is a fight, that's what it is. You know, you are going against an established culture, you are going against people. So first of all, you have to have a strong code of ethics. You know, National Assembly, you have code of ethics, you have um, their yeah, ethics committee. But, you know, that, that code has to define minimum standards, and, you know, on that which the legislators are to operate. And then they have to take it seriously. If their members are not abiding by the code of ethics, what happens? Um, then... Okay, Ru. There's also... Yes. Yeah, um, so, um, interestingly, brilliant... Um, uh, conversation and point you are making there uh, you, you you've actually highlighted the problem but let's look at how we can solve this problem how can the 10th national assembly better fight these lapses that you have pointed out okay well, i think first of all they have to be assertive the national assembly is an arm of government and it's supposed to be an independent arm of government so they have to be really independent and to have an independent um you need um, good, you need good competence, you need strong leadership that will command respect. So the question is, do we think we have a strong leadership in the dance, in the Senate and the House of Reps? Um, if the leadership is not strong, if they are not, if they don't consider themselves to be independent or if they don't take independent action, then really the fight against corruption is already lost. Um, so for me, I think that's, that's the very first, you really have to be independent. And then they have to really uh, reinforce their own internal mechanisms for bringing government agencies to account. I mean, I talked about capacity issues. Um, you have committees. Committees are not set up yet. Those committees have to be well funded. You know, what are their procedures? How do they work? When they issue reports, do you actually consider them? Do you publish? You know, do they publish those reports? Those reports have to be public. I remember in the eighth assembly, there's this report that came late in the day. You know, they have come a committee. They did an investigation on um on the volume of uh of well petrol uh consumed in the country and you know it, the report you know it took them seventeen months to do this conduct an investigation and they released their report in May. The assembly was on their way out and I know a lot of people were being critical like okay you've done a good job but why is it just coming down and what is going to be done about it. So so, so you are, in essence you are saying that they back but they don't bite even when their corruption reports uh, are, yeah, yeah. are released, so nothing large, is being done. Yes, yeah, to a large extent, to a large extent, they have to really be assertive and assume that constitutional power that you just talked about. So um, it's one thing to even do the investigation. Is that you have, you have to pub- publish it because you need the they need the public in this fight against corruption. If the public is not on their side, then it's a problem. And one, getting the public on your side means you managing this issue of perception, being accountable, even about you know, your own processes, your own budget, uh, because if people feel you're not accountable as a body, then they don't feel the sense to be accountable to you as an oversight um, institution. I'm very sure you are aware of um, news about uh, budget pardon in the in the past, inflation of contracts, and other few things that the public, those perceptions of the public have about the uh, uh, National Assembly. How can we get past 
the era of budget pardon in the National Assembly? How can we? Well, first of all, they have to even accept because National Assembly does not accept that there is budget pardon. They don't accept that. They don't accept. They don't no, they don't accept that um, there is budget pardon. <laughs> um, if you follow the conversations, most of them, uh, they are the, you know, they are the, the topic they are very defensive about. You know, you we had a situation where the executive proposes a budget and then the National Assembly um, make adjustments, you know, they increase it and all that. So a lot of the times, you know, when you get the defense, you always say, oh, we're exercising our right to amend the budget, which is the legislation. Um, but, you know, a lot of people know that that's not always the case. So I, I think there has to be, that's, that's, um, that's realization acceptance that, okay, there's a problem. Do you fear of their independence for those, a lot of people that uh, uh, branded the last National Assembly rubber stamp, do you fear of such scenario in this assembly? Do I? Sorry, can you repeat do you, do you? Are you worried about uh, those, some people branded the last National Assembly, that, that is the ninth National Assembly, do you fear that that may have repeat, uh, that we might have a repeat of that in this assembly? Definitely. Definitely, you have because you know one key thing is you know the recruitment and mechanism. How, how do legislators get into the national assembly? It's through elections, and if you have a situation where most a lot of them are in court, and if you have a situation where people people the elections are being questioned, what does that does that tell you? It tells you one they are unsettled, unsettled, and when people are unsettled, most times they will do you know they will really really work hard or do almost anything to retain their seats. That's one. And then it means your voice is not really strong. You are not. You are distracted. You are not paying attention. So you know the ma the manner in which you are elected will come in. And if if you have an election matter hanging around your head, or you have some other anti corruption hanging around your head, then there is a possibility that you will not stand firm uh, in, in fighting uh, issues of corrup corruption, or even or that you are distracted and you are focused on you know kind of winning back your seats. So all that is connected. So definitely, okay, interior, with a lot of cases, yeah, all yeah, right. definitely, there's a probability of that happening. All right, thank you. But before we let you go, I would like you to, um, in your own way, if you are to set the agenda for the 10th National Assembly, what will it be, and what is your advice to the lawmakers? So setting agenda is for me. I I I, I don't think it's one person's job. I think it should be. So I think everybody should be involved. Um, the National Assembly is a representative body, um, they represent constituents. And if you're talking about agenda, are you talking about agenda of corruption? If you're talking anti -corru about anti corruption agenda. agenda. Okay, yeah, because it's very broad. If you ask me to set an agenda, I may have my own areas of interest. I want people to have their own areas of interest. Well, generally, you know, I think the, the National Assembly has to look at you know, the impact of the subsidy removal, you know, the economic challenges in the country and the rest of it. But for anti-corruption specifically, you know, they have to really um, employ preventive measures. Um, they have to look back at strengthening anti-corruption watchdogs, um, strengthening their laws. Uh, there's an audit bill, and our standing bill is really dealing with anti-corruption. For instance, there's a federal audit bill um, that has been outstanding. The, the, that bill is supposed to strengthen um, audits, you know, public audits, and enhance the work of the Public Accounts Committee. All right. uh, to fight on your corruption. So some of those views. And I think the last assembly, there are also conversations about establishing special courts to prosecute anti-corruption cases. So those are conversations that they need to this is. In the right. in the ninth assembly, they were attempt to amend the ICTC Act. However, it didn't work out. And I think people really need to pay attention because they they are going to attempt to whittle down the power of, of that commission. So it's uh, one thing for them to put the education. So citizens open it vigilant to be sure that these um, legislative measures or laws or bills um, are really standards and you know that they are paying attention to best practices and not further even reducing the effectiveness of this um, anti-corruption body. All right, Nkiru Ozodi, we must thank you so much. Nkiru Ozodi is uh, the program manager, legislative and gender issues at. Policy and Legal Advocacy Center. Thank you so much for your brilliant contribution to the program. Thank you for having me. All right. If you just joined us, uh, it is still public conscience, and we are looking at the legislative agenda for the 10th National Assembly, especially as it concerns 
you know anti-corruption and oversight function and quickly we've spent a whole lot of time talking to our guests i think it's time for us to get involved get you involved into the conversation you are listener and remember that this program is interactive the whatsapp phone line to send your message is zero nine zero two two six five six one six seven zero nine zero two two six five six one six seven this number is for messages only please begin to send your messages now to zero nine zero two two six five six one six seven and we want you to weigh into the conversation uh, as a citizen what are your expectations of the national assembly especially in the aspect of lawmaking oversighting oversight function and fight against corruption uh, what do you want to see different in the current assembly what are your concerns about the 10th assembly are you worried about their independence and just to tell you that in the studio here we have joining us one of our colleagues uh the program manager at primog dr adobe Obiabumo. thank you for joining us thank you for having me today it's been an interesting time and today we are beaming the searchlight on what the national assembly should do to get our laws uh, working better and also oversight functions, anti-corruption, all those issues. Uh, let's have your take, your initial impression about the house so far. <laughs> okay, they just assumed, so for now we are still watching. You can't particularly say or the direction that they will swing to, but we will continue to monitor the progress. You know, they say um, a good weekend, you will know you have the signs from a Thursday uh, and probably a Wednesday. Now, let me get to where I'm going to. Yesterday, President Ahmed Bola Tinibu said that he will look at, he will take a look at the 8,000 naira that is meant to go to go for palliatives to 12 million households. Now, my, the point is that the, the National Assembly quickly approved this loan there has been an approval for this loan by one of the arms of national assembly so the question is that there was no debate on it but the outcry of nigerians pushed the government back to say okay let's take a look back are you scared or worried about independence of this assembly Okay, just like um, one of the guests said, talking about the independence of the National Assembly and the leadership, that would determine if you would have an assembly that is um, strong enough to handle issues. But for the 8th and 10th Assembly, like you rightly mentioned, um, some of them are not quite settled. And yes, talking about the 8,000 Naira for 12 million households, recall that this started from the last assembly, and while the president said he was going to get 500 billion from the supplementary budget, that's the 2022 supplementary budget. So it is not. It the also got an express approval. Yes. So you would not um, particularly blame the tenth assembly that they just went ahead and approved it, or that they did not sit to debate that. In as much as would have wanted a situation where they would look at the issue and say to Mr. President that 8,000 per household is too small. There was no debate. That's the point. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That I would have preferred a situation where they had that debate before approval. Do you think that that debate did not come up because we have um, new lawmakers in the uh, in this mm -hmm. assembly? I don't understand. That is, uh, whether they are this, the, based on legislative experience, whether yes, their experience played on it. But there are old lawmakers yes, who are quite there. experienced there. And so. you don't even need and um, experience to debate 8,000 Naira per household. Absolutely. After all, you're Nigerians. You have dependents out there. But let's still, we are, we, let's still op tell you that you can call us and, you know, make contributions into the program. And we want you to call in and tell us what your own impression about the National Assembly is. What are your expectations? What agenda do you want them to pursue? Anti-corruption, oversight functions, or lawmaking? What bothers you? And um, yeah, <laughs> yes, we are streaming on Facebook at Official Prime Org. You can go there and drop a message, and we'll read it. 
Okay, to say just to quickly mention, because we are looking at um, setting the legislative agenda for our 10th Assembly, that the National Institute of Legislative and Democratic Studies, sometime in May, had a roundtable discussion where the outcome of the discussion would form part of the legislative agenda for the 10th Assembly. Some of the um, thematic areas that were touched on or agreed upon were or are economy, health, security, human rights issues, judicial reform, education, women affair, amongst others. We did not particularly see anti-corruption issues here. Interesting. You give me give us that information more. Hello? Oh. Okay, Frank. Okay. Let's hear you. Okay. Okay, Frank. Frank, before I let you go, I just want to ask you how close are you to your lawmaker, the, your representatives? Uh, I'm asking you, sorry, how close are you to your lawmakers, the people that represent your uh, senatorial district, district and um, constituencies? Okay. 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 Uh, we must thank you for your contribution, Esther. He, he doesn't want to have anything, but we have a role to play as citizens. So as we try to set agenda, if you are lawmaker, know that you are not happy with whatever that is happening there, because his voice has to be into whatever that is happening. They are representing us. That's why when they bring a loan, if government brings any loan that we even that our children will have to pay, it's still our representatives there that will sign it and endorse it. So if our lawmakers keep quiet, it is at our own detriment. Yeah. And another thing, aside voting, electing these people into offices, we still have the responsibilities as citizens to follow up He's saying you cannot have anything to do with them. How then do you convey your needs to them for, for it to be able to transcend to the bigger house? How then would your voice be heard? All right, let's see who else is here. Hello? Okay, please, 30 seconds. you frank we urge you to not to relent in engaging them 
thank you for joining us let, let me get to uh, dr obia more because um as we begin to you know go close to the end point of this program uh, what is your own anti-corruption agenda for this government okay um because um thank you for that first off um we want a situation where the gap between the lead and the legislators are breached because legislators are there to represent their constituents you can legislate on my behalf if you do not know what my needs are we cannot overemphasize the impact of corruption on the economy and every other aspect of our lives and democracy as a nation so i want to see a situation where the public accounts committee at the national assembly is functional i want to see a situation where um Auditor General report, Auditor General's report is being taken seriously. What does the law say about the report? How come these reports are out and no action is taken? I want to see a situation where um, the new we have bills, the new bills for the Auditor General's report and um, Auditor the audit bill. Yes, it's been um, revised. I want to see the whistleblower bill worked on and assented by the president. If we're looking at the fight against corruption and its effect on our country, whistleblowers should be encouraged to blow the whistle. Apart from blowing the whistle, they should be protected. Journalists who have the constitutional mandate to blow the whistle should also be protected. They should not be gagged by the instruments of the law and um, security agencies being used by politicians to gag journalists. When you look at whistleblowing, whistleblowing, it is a fundamental human rights issue. Freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. People should be allowed to express themselves freely, especially when it harms the country. Okay. I want to see a robust national assembly i want to see an engaging national assembly by engaging i mean the chit chat between the constituency the constituents and the legislators all right i will take back uh, take your thoughts more let's get who is calling hello hello yeah good morning your name and where you're calling from <laughs> all right frank 30 seconds uh, no uh, no problem go ahead I want to go to uh, uh, about that whistleblower. You see, let me get, let me get later that those last week after our conversation, there was something that come to me, telling me something about about money keeping somewhere. I know that for a second. If you have any way of getting your own, they are going to get your own. Don't even if you see what I'm passing through. But, but 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 Frank, uh, two wrongs doesn't make a right. It's not a good advice. Uh, Frank, let's agree that you didn't do well there. I know that you are feeling the heat after uh, because you blew, blew the whistle on corruption, but you cannot advise somebody to do his own and not to do the right thing. You know, we, we, we cannot th throw this our country under the bus because of what has happened to us. We have a nation to build. We have children coming after us. And I think we'll talk after this program. We'll talk more about it after this program. But many thanks for sharing. We'll continue this conversation later. Thank you. So let's have you wrap up, uh, Dr. Biabomo. Okay. Um, I like the fact that you cautioned um, Frank there mm -hmm. because it is not good for us to, for everybody to just continuously dip their hands into the nation's um, treasury mm -hmm. um, because you feel or not that you feel because um you have not been protected after you blew the whistle yes okay looking at the national assembly the oversight function ideally constitutionally in the national assembly or the legislature they have three um, functions which is representation oversight and lawmaking we want them to oversight properly 
we don't, in as much as we want um, a peaceful collaboration between the executive and the legislature, we also want them to take that job of oversight seriously. If there are allegations, the National Assembly should be able to weigh in and investigate. Aside from investigating, they should get the appropriate authorities to prosecute. To prosecute. Anyway, one scenario that most of us wouldn't want to uh, see is the off your mic situation again. We want uh, them to, you know, be open and whatever corruption issue, treat it open in the open and make sure that um, people are brought to book to set a precedence. Esther? Does it permit me to say this? In as much as we want the National Assembly to oversight other MDAs, National Assembly itself should be accountable and transparent. Absolutely. I agree with you. Esther, you have any uh, uh, input in 15 seconds know, before no, we go? No, no, no. <laughs> you are saturated. And um, <laughs> this is where we'll be drawing the curtains on today's program. It's been a robust one from our guests on phone out there. And also uh, Dr. Adobe Obiabumo, who joined us in the studio here. Okay, please follow us. Uh, please visit our news website, primognews.org, that is primognews.org, for all the details of our reports and the interviews. Visit our website, www.primog.org, to get all the information about Primog. And you can watch our videos on Primog TV, our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to get reminders when we have a new post. We appreciate our guests. Uh, program manager legislative and gender issues at policy and legal advocacy center plaque Nkiru Ozode Ozode and investigative journalist with Wiki Times Yakubu Mohammed. Thank you all for joining us today. Public Conscience has the support of the John D and Catherine T MacArthur Foundation committed to building a more just, verdant, and peaceful world. Get more information about the foundation on its website, macfound.org. Join us again here next week for another episode of Public Functions. And remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Official Primark. I am Esther Basson. Remember that birth registration and birth certificate are both free if your child is under 18. Help stop the corruption in birth registration and do not pay for birth certificates. Also, remember that you can give us hint or information about corrupt acts through our phone at 090-2265-6167 or info at primog.org. I am Chidozi Obonaya. Stay safe.